they are committed that our faith journey is a transformational journey and should not be taken for granted. It is not about what the world has placed before us, distracting us from actually tapping into the powers and strengths that we're supposed to be able to use to live a life of fulfillment. The funny thing is that I'm making this video after I already apply these principles. At the time I was applying these principles, I didn't know that that was what I was doing. But looking back now, I can see that that's the mindset that I had. So watch this, pay close attention. And after this video, the next video is going to be me explaining the problems that I had and how I got into manifesting the changes with the principles that I'm teaching in this video. Now, in a personal transformation journey and self-development journey, if you're feeling stagnated, I want to drop these four verses that will be helpful, that I know that we derive strength from, because the Bible does give us strength, but we don't know because we're so busy being distracted. In a journey of personal development, this will help us to stay strong and to keep the path. Even if you're not a Christian, if you don't believe in God even, we will use this to gain clarity over conducting choices that will be in alignment with your purpose and destination. I always want to mention this at the beginning of my videos before I start, because fulfillment is for absolutely everyone. It's not only for believers. And I know that all these principles apply to everyone because our Father wants us to live a life of fulfillment. So I encourage you to take this to heart, even if you're not a believer, and watch how your life will be transformed. The reason is because things have been set for us as human beings to be distracted and to feel like we're not enough and that things are more difficult than they really should be. And I know that that is not how life works. I know for certain from experience and from observing other people, things are way more simple than they appear. Unfortunately, people are living in misery because we just haven't understood that nature is on our side. Nature is our friend. For the fact that we were born and placed on this earth without any efforts of our own is one thing, is where it all starts from. That tells us that it doesn't require an overwhelming effort that is beyond us for us to conduct our lives, to live happily and with fulfillment. We just need to revisit what we're viewing our sights and rearrange our side ourselves for what our Lord has prepared for us so that we live a life of fulfillment. The Bible contains guides for true personal development in so many different ways. But we get carried away with going to church and being in flow with religion. And this is my firm belief. I've observed this. And I've observed this in people's lives, the lives of people close to me, and all the misery that people have thrown themselves into from religion rather than a lifestyle that we're supposed to adopt. So grab these verses that are available to us so that we can feel the growth and good promised by our loving Father instead. These verses will change your life. It will help us to reflect and learn and grow from within because true transformation comes from within. You, number one, you need to be who you are and live it. And that is what Romans 12 2 tells us, to not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The world is constantly trying to shape us into something that we're not, but we must remember that personal growth and self-development start from within and from the renewal of our minds by evaluating and transforming our thinking. And as we do this, we're better able to discern what is good and perfect for us. If you have any problem with that, let me know in the comments because we need to reflect inwards to actually know who we are. The moment that you try to live a life that is not you, you've complicated your life. And that is what this verse is reminding us about. The second verse is Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, which says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For our Almighty Father will be with us wherever we go. At times when we face situations that we feel are too difficult, we are not to be afraid. And even if we feel fear, we are to know inside our minds that we should be courageous because our loving Father will make a way for us. He will make a solution for us. As long as we keep our senses about us, be watchful with our eyes that he has provided us, with our minds, our healthy minds that he has provided us. Everything that we have is for us to be able to live in fulfillment of our lives. Once we do that, we can rest assured that leaving the rest for him to do, we're covered. He will do what needs to be done because he knows our beginning and our end. And his thoughts for us are of good and not of evil. So let us keep strong and courageous 
and not fear, and we will get to our destination. This is where we should derive strength from. This verse encourages us to be courageous in the pursuit of anything that we're doing because we're not alone. He's with us, providing for us, providing strength and courage for us. And he will see that we will get what we need when we need it the most. The third verse is Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And the beauty of this verse lies in its simplicity, honestly. Without promising an easy journey, it assures us that we will have the strength to accomplish anything that we want, for real. And then you may ask, how is that strengthening? To me, the answer is really simple, because if you will not believe that you can overcome, your other alternative is to give up. Which of these two do you choose? If you give up, it's the end. It's really just that simple. You've got to either choose to be an overcomer or to give up. Once you give up, it's the end of story. You are not going to get what you want. So bear in mind that Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 tells us, let's hold strong to it, that we can do all things and we'll be strengthened to do all things. Just choose what is good for you. What do you want? Is it good for you? Choose it and you'll be strengthened to get it. And do not let fear make you back down or give up. Because once you do that, it's all lost. And that's how people find themselves living with what they don't like for 20 years, 25 years, because they've given up and decided that they're not going to be able to get it. And the fourth and last verse is Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. See, all of these verses are saying the same thing. It's the same thing in different words that you can apply in different instances, but it's the same thing. So stay focused. We find ourselves at crossroads every now and then, unsure about what path to take at different times of our lives. And the uncertainty creates an overthinking that makes things overwhelming. Uh, so just cast your fears and burdens on your almighty Father, and you will find that instead of worrying and overwhelming yourself, things will be sorted out because it's little drops that make an ocean. Little drops. When we're overwhelmed, it feels like everything is just too much and then we'll have no idea where to start to solve our problems. But once we figure that we cannot handle it and we'll just cast it onto him, for the first part, just cast it onto him. And then you'll follow up by doing bit by bit everything that is achievable within your means and your ability. And before we know it, we've started one, we've done one quarter of the journey and then two quarters and then three quarters and then the whole thing. I can use the example of immigrants or new parents with young children or even things that I've done on Diaspora Lounge with people, people that I've worked with on Diaspora Lounge for different areas. Let me use young parents to start with. When you have young children, I remember when I was in this situation even, I would say to people with older children that I can't wait for when I need to, when I'll be able to go about appointments and errands without worrying about children, young children. Because when your children are grown, you can go into your car, run into your car to go for appointments, to go for anything you need to without worrying about who's going to take care of your children. Because sometimes you have appointments and errands that you cannot have company. You cannot have particularly little children with you. And sometimes you have to trade off something. It's, it becomes difficult because you're not able to do this thing because you have no one to suddenly call upon to take care of your children, right? And so you are faced with those choices and those difficulties. But I don't have that problem anymore. I don't have to deal with that anymore. That's no longer a problem, right? People whose children are getting married now, people whose children are graduates, people who have grandchildren now, once upon a time, they were looking at people with older children and feeling, thinking, wishing that they couldn't wait for when their own children will grow up. So that is what life is. Whatever it is, cast the burden onto God. Stop looking at the whole nine yards and the whole heavy weight. Just that with the little that is within your capability right now. Because when you feel that heavy load, you're not even able to move. It's, it just overburdens you. You're not able to take the first step. So remember that you're not to deal with the whole thing by yourself. Our Father will take care of us. Look at the lilies in the field. Just take the first step. And before you know what's happening, you'll have success. You'll have overcome that heavy load, that heavy burden. This is a problem that new immigrants often face. When new people arrive, it's like, how do I forget that I already did four or five or six years of university? In fact, maybe I already had a master's. And then now I have to start on a whole new different career path and do another four years. It's like, no, I can't do that. And before we know what's happening, four years have passed, even 10 years have passed. In that time, a person could have done two courses and a half 
But because they were afraid of taking a step of something that seemed like too much of a burden for another four years or five years, and you say, I just can't, next thing you know, all that time is gone. So you see, it's taking that first step, that first step. Before we know what's happening, something that appears like it's too big, we would get to the points that we're wishing for right now by taking the first step. So just pass your burden onto God. Close your eyes and take the first step and we'll achieve something. See, all the people that we admire today who have achieved something that we find admirable, they didn't come out of their mother's wounds with those successes. And also, sometimes when you're in a place doing what you're supposed to be doing at that time, it grows faster than you even know. And maybe it takes you to a place that is beyond what you have thought about because it prepares you in a way that you don't know. When you're in the garden, before you know what's happening, somebody else will see you and see that you're tending that garden very well. It's happened with me on the Aspara Lounge, but to get something bigger. People have even used stuff like this as a springboard to jobs. Whatever you're looking at as a little thing, is that thing that will take it to the next big thing. We need an addition of little, little things to make something big. So instead of being overwhelmed with how do I even get to this thing that I want, it's such a big, long journey. No, just take the first step and cast your burdens onto God. And once, you, you know, when you think, well, okay, right now, I want you to think about the things that you wanted to do for the past maybe four, five, even 10 years. How many of them have you done? Make a list of those things that you thought about doing. How long ago did you think about doing these things? And from the time I thought about doing them till now, you haven't done them. You haven't done many of those things because you were thinking it's too much. How am I going to get to the final destination that you're looking at? Well, you see, if you had started, by now you would have been doing it for three years or four years or five years, and by now you would have been an expert. And maybe some people would have seen you doing that, and from that they would have called you to do something beyond what you were even thinking about because they would already have seen that you have the capability to do this thing. So that's why you must start with the first step. Just cast everything else onto God and do what you're able to do right now. It's the very first step that takes us to the phenomenal things that we see people who have achieved doing. The people that it's it's the first step that takes these people that we see who have achieved phenomenal things. That is how it is with everybody that we admire today. They started with the first step. And so that's what we're going to do. Now tell me in the comments that you're going to do exactly this. You're going to take that first step and you're going to take all these verses that we just talked about now. You're going to apply them in your life. You're going to know that cast your burdens onto God and things are going to work. You're going to know that you can do all things. You're going to know that you should be yourself and do not be distracted and do not allow the world to determine who you are. With these four things together, you're going to get to where you are heading to. You're going to get to the promised land. You're going to get to your destination. But remember that nothing is going to fall onto your laps. If you want to get to the gate, even, you're going to have to take the first step to get out of your room, off the chair, get stressed and walk out. You're always going to have to take the first step and you're always going to start with the belief that you can do it. Because if you don't have the belief that you can do it, then that is you knowing yourself. Then there is nothing. So it's these four things, put them together and you will start to see little changes in your life, which will lead to the big changes that you're looking for. Tell me in the comments that you're going to apply this. And remember to like this video and to share it so that other people can benefit from it because we're all here for conscious empowerment. So as I promised, next I'm going to upload a video to show you how I apply these principles to get changes in my very dire, very, very dire and difficult circumstances. Bye-bye. See you in the next video.